Hey everybody, Peter and Justin here from InSync Defense Academy. Thanks for watching. As always, our mission is not only to teach you how to fight, but also how to live. We do this by teaching practical tools based on time-tested word traditions, ancient wisdom, and modern science. So today we're going to be talking about the 21-foot rule. Now that is a measure of distance for the amount of time that it would take a trained officer to pull out their sidearm and be able to get two rounds off into center mass with an armed attacker charging at them. And this armed attacker usually had a knife and it could be used with any other type of weapon. Uh, what we love about this 21-foot uh, rule concept is the idea of, of really defining critical distance and understanding that. Today we want to explore kind of uh, how that works against self-defense. Uh, when we were teaching some self-defense classes, we kind of determined that uh, there's a point where you can run and there's a point where running is no longer an option. So we wanted to use that as an idea to kind of uh, explore with that. We're going to bring in some girls today and we're going to test that. The other thing we want to do is we using like the concept of ancient wisdom. Uh, in our school, we have a samurai kata with a sword and we're going to explore that and, and what it teaches uh, and, and how that relates to this 21 foot rule. So what I have to do is I have to, number one, identify that there's a threat. Once I identify the threat, so that takes time to think about this, right? I've got to, I, okay, this guy's attacking me, right? Is he attacking someone else? No, he's attacking me, right? And then I got to pull my firearm and I got to shoot two rounds center mass to ensure that I'm not going to get killed by this crazy lunatic that's charging me, right? So this is 21 feet right here. So we're gonna, we'll try it. Ready, go. Bam, boom. So that's, that's basically the 21 foot rule. And that was pretty close. So let's say, I'm gonna stay here. Why don't you come forward and maybe, yeah, they're like, now we're gonna try and see. Okay, ready, go. Bam. So I got one shot off. That's not safe enough. So that's why they've established this 21 foot rule. When we were studying this out and kind of playing with this idea, we thought about a couple things is, well, what happens if you're too late? And by the time you realize it, you don't have 21 feet. What do you do then? As part of our samurai tradition, there's a kata with a sword that trains you how to deal with somebody rushing you with a sword. And so I thought, well, maybe this is a good tool that we could use as an opportunity to explore you know, this 21 foot rule and how do you deal with something that's under 21 feet. So he's gonna come and give me about 11 feet instead of 21 and we'll see how I do. Boom! I got one shot off, I think I missed because he was kinda, of, as he came around and he hit me pretty good. So now let's, let's explore this sword kata and see what it teaches us. So let me grab my sword. And Justin's gonna, we'll do the traditional kata, so he'll have a sword. He'll use a padded sword because there's a chance I might get hit. This kata actually starts from here. And you're actually just at this distance where he takes, he can't reach me, he has to take one step and he's able to cut me, right? A lot closer than 21 feet, right? So I felt like, oh, this is a very similar type of scenario. This is just kind of like what we call our ancient wisdom that we like to draw from. I'm gonna try and draw, right, as he cuts me. No matter how fast I try and go, it would be literally impossible for me to draw at this range because my sword is sheathed and his is already out. So it doesn't matter how fast I can train myself to be, I'm probably gonna lose 99% of the time unless I'm really, really lucky. So what's great about this kata is that it makes something like this actually work. So let's see how it works. So I stand there and I present the target and I let him see the target and then I step away. This gives me all the time in the world now to draw, right? So it says in, in the scrolls, it says calmly move 45 degrees to the rear to evade, then draw your sword. So I figured that's really a, like one of the key things is I first got to not be there where he's expecting me to be. And so we're going to try this now with the 10 foot rule. So as he comes charging, boom, then I come in and I draw. Boom. So we're like, oh, that really works. It's amazing, right? Then we thought, well, how would that work in the scenario with 
a knife versus a pistol. So we explored that. We don't have a knife, so we're just gonna simulate this with this because we can really hit a lot harder with this to make it a little bit more realistic. My goal is to rush in, bam, 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 and hit. Ready? I know you gotta move quick because I'm coming quick, but the timing is really critical here too. Wow, that was so close. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I felt like I had you. And that's the, the secret is like the attacker needs to feel like he has you the whole time until the very last second when he realizes he just lost. In a fight scenario, when you're being threatened, you have three choices, right? Run, run or what? Fight, fight die. or die, right? <laughs> the other one is freeze, right? And a lot of people don't really understand the concept of freeze, but think about the freeze as like this idea of a false surrender, right? Or you're patiently waiting for the right moment. That takes a really high level of skill to be able to remain calm under that much pressure, right? Imagine being a cop and somebody's got a, a, a knife, he's running at you. Like that's really hard because they don't train for that every day. That's very rare that somebody has to draw their weapon let alone when somebody's rushing them with a knife, right? So in order to be able to do that kind of training, it takes a lot of repetition, and that's why we don't teach those kind of things for self-defense, because it's not realistic. But it's not impossible, it just takes a lot of skill and training to be able to get that good. We're gonna use the 21-foot rule to determine, so Justin, you wanna be over here as the attacker? Sure. And Esther, you wanna start on this one? You're gonna be at this point right here, and this is 21 feet. Just back up right about there. So just be careful, Justin, this is still wet. As soon as he starts to attack you, you're gonna try and run away, right? And then we're gonna get closer and closer and closer and find out where it's safe to run and where it's no longer safe to run. We're gonna assume at 21 feet, you should probably have the advantage, and that's enough distance to run. But we don't know, we've never tested this with you, right? Everybody's different. Everyone needs to do their own testing for themselves to see what they are capable of. Okay, are you ready? Yep. You look pretty safe, right? Go to where you think you can still run away and be safe. We don't know, right? It's an experiment. We have no, I, I, I don't have the answer, right? And his goal is as you're running, before you get through that door, he's gonna try and touch you with the pad, okay? Ready? You ready? So here's something to consider, right? There's a door there. That's almost like a goal. If I can get through that door, I can be safe, right? That may or may not be to a statement, but that's how you assess your judgment. Am I gonna run or am I gonna stay and fight, right? But let's say that that door was 20 more feet away. I think that distance probably would no longer be valid. Yeah. But you, 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 because this is the scenario that we're in, in this space, that worked. Mary Jo, you wanna try it? So why don't you just go to wherever you feel like you can get away. All right. Close. So that was really, really close, right? So this is just good to know. And for everybody, it's gonna be a different distance, right? So this, there's no magical thing. It's a little bit of an art, right? And everyone has to test it out for themselves. So come on closer where you think you're not gonna get away. Okay. I think you were afraid for your life. You actually made it. <laughs> we're gonna go until you fail, right? Okay, so now, are you gonna run again? From here? Yeah. No, good answer, right? Because you know that if you do, you're just gonna get killed, right? Running is not the answer, so what other choices do you have? Well, Fight? Yeah. Or freeze, freeze, right? Let me know, you ready? Okay. Nice. nice. That was good. Awesome. That worked, right? You got away, and you were kind of nice to him, but you were in a position where you could easily have taken him down, right? You should have kept on going. I'll tell you what, though, when I missed, whew, I went all the way through. Yeah, he was in a really vulnerable position as soon as you came up. That's when you take advantage, right? You're in that position of superiority, take advantage and follow through with an attack. Well done, all right. So you gotta fail first, because this is part of the learning, right? You learn just as much by failing, actually you learn more by failing than you do by sometimes succeeding, right? Because it gets ingrained into your psyche and you're like, man, that really sucked to fail. Yeah. I don't wanna ever have that happen again. 
You almost got away. That was impressive. <laughs> this time, you know you're not going to run. So now you've got to deal with this. And let's see what you do. Ready? Good. Yeah, see how you have to finish, right? That was a perfect example of what we've been talking about. Like, you got away, you were safe, you know, like you got them off balance. That's when you have to follow. That's why we always teach you don't just rely on one attack, do at least three. That was go. good. Perfect. Nice. Okay, now Justin and I will play around with this idea. Here's one concept that you guys didn't do. So as he comes in, I'm going straight in, right, for the attack, right? You really have two options when it comes to evading a strike, right? What you guys did was perfect, right? You went in here, first you attacked, then you came in. That's what you did. That was awesome, right? From here, bam, bam, and then you finish, right? What you did was great. You're here. Bam, you come in here, and then you can finish. Now, what you guys didn't do is this one. Boom. Right when he, he's expecting to hit me here, right? So I either get out of the way, or I go in. Right here. So here, I'm just bringing this up. Go straight into the eyes. Boom. That's when you stomp on the ground. He's not going to protect himself against that. Right? Then I'm going to stomp on the ankle just for fun as a see you later. You get there, you, you show us something. Ready? And I was committed and all that energy, he just kind of slipped right by it. All right, one more time. Whoa. That was a good hit. He hit me right square in the ear. I don't know if you saw that. I thought it was like, he's not doing anything. Boom. Right when I wasn't expecting it, I got hit. So that's exactly what you want. You want to make them feel like they're winning. Even though I missed him and I lost, as I came in close, he wasn't doing anything. And I was like, I got him. I'm going to just hit him again. And that's when he hit me, right? So that's what you want. You want to make them feel like they're winning until it's too late. All right. I think that's a wrap. High fives all around over here, ladies. Thank you. Thank you. Good job. Good job. Yes.